And then what's our passwords and stuff? Uh, I sent to your other email the password. Oh, that was a long time ago. I, I will resend it on Thursday. Because then I thought we had a problem, so I'm like, well, I guess it's not working. No. That would be great. They are working. I'll resend that email to everybody on Thursday. Great. That'd be good. Thank you. Do me a favor since it I... probably has a thousand, right? No. <laughs> no. No. Not too many. <laughs> no. No. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it is seven o'clock. Actually, it's seven o two, and you do have a quorum. And you're ready to go and record it. Yes, I am. Okay. <clears throat> I will call the January 12th, 2021 meeting of the Newton Planning Board to order. As chair of the Newton Planning Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, and most recently extended by Executive Order 2020-25, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are utilizing the Zoom platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting telephonically or by using the Zoom website. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting telephonically. Instructions have also been provided on the town website. If anyone has problems, they should email the planning board office at planningboard at newtonnh.net. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be rescheduled and adjourned. Please note that all votes will be taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Also in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 23, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, and most recently extended by Executive Order 2020-25, the Planning Board is relieved from the statutory and local requirements to meet on a particular schedule or a certain number of times within a given time frame. The Planning Board is also relieved from complying with statutory and local deadlines for accepting, hearing, and acting on Planning Board applications. No, as an attendee of the meeting, your microphone and or phone will be muted. The board chair will specify when the public comment period is open for an application. Town staff will be in attendance at the meeting to manage the public comment process. If you are participating online with the Zoom program, click on the hand icon at the bottom of the screen. This will raise your hand so that the moderator will know that you wish to speak. If you are participating by phone, press star nine. This will indicate to the moderator that you wish to speak. When it is your turn, the moderator will unmute you and let you know that you can share your comments. When speaking during the meeting, please announce your name so the administrative assistant can know who is speaking as he is taking notes. At this time, I'd ask Mr. Doggett to call the roll of members. Please state if you are alone. Mr. Hamill. I am present and alone. Ms. Esterbrook. Present and alone. Ms. Collier. Present and alone. Mr. Foote does not appear to be here. Mr. White is excused. Mr. Andrews is excused. Mr. Cromlick. I didn't see him here. Is not. Okay, Ms. Allen is excused. Ms. White? Here and alone. Mrs. Forza? I sat with that. Present, two children. 
Okay, at this time, I'll name uh, Miss White to be a voting member in the place of, of Jim White. And I will appoint Steve Sforza to be a voting member in the place of Mike Andrews. The first item on the agenda is 125 Development, New Hampshire Corp of Plastow, New Hampshire, requesting a public hearing for a 36 lot subdivision on South Main Street, Route 108, Newton, New Hampshire. The property is referenced as tax map 14, block one, lot 273. This is a continuation that uh, we have not yet taken jurisdiction on this item. And as the, as Mr. Doggett has put up, he, Mr. McDonough is requesting that we uh, give him an extension until January 26th. Mr. Chair, this is Annie, also move. Roger, can I just bring up one point real quick for the board to consider? I don't mean to interrupt Annie's motion. Okay, as long as, it, 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 are we gonna get into a discussion of the issue? That is completely up to the board. I just wanted to give the board a rundown of its options okay, that it can ahead. choose to do. Go ahead. So as most of you are aware, this application has been continued and was applied for back in August with its first hearing being scheduled for your September, I believe it was September 10th meeting. To date, it is still incomplete. Um, even though some additional information was supplied um, yesterday, it is still an incomplete application in my opinion. Um, that is obviously something the board needs to decide. But because of the continued request for a continuance, so we've been going on this for several months now, the board does have the options to either, you could just deny it as incomplete, if that is something you wanted to do. But perhaps more pertinently, abutters have been noticed legally throughout this process. They were noticed formally um, back for the September hearing, but the formal noticing mechanism has since then been just in the meeting minutes and done during the course of the board's meetings. Because it has been so long since this application was applied for, I would strongly recommend the board re-notice the abutters. It does not necessarily need to be certified mail because you have met all of your legal, legal obligations. But to be in this, fair to the abutters to be able to be informed of applications, because it has been so long, I would recommend the board consider re-notifying applicants or I'm sorry, re-notifying the abutters. So you do still have the option to continue it if you want to. You could deny it is incomplete if you wanted to, but you can also do what would be considered a middle ground and re-notice it. So that's all I had to say, Roger. Okay. In that case, and if, if the board is going to discuss that issue, I am gonna recuse myself from the board for, for the discussion of that and, and Sandy will can chair that the, the meeting and, until this uh, issue is resolved. So Sandy, you're on. I'm back on. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Jen. Jen. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. I was hoping not to have to run this tonight. <laughs> Sorry, and before I interrupted, um, Annie did have a motion. So Annie, I do apologize for interrupting. That. That's okay. I think I, it was one of the things that I was going to ask about. I mean, typically, I don't know, I don't know for sure, I'm, I'm used to a procedure where there's a motion on the floor and then discussion happens. I know sometimes we have our discussion and then have a motion. Um, I, I'm not sure what's the appropriate order here. Sandy, what, how do you want to do it? Well, I guess you made your motion first. So I guess if we have a second on the motion, we could talk about it. And then if they want to go back to Genesis thing, they could vote no on yours. <laughs> well, I'd like, to, I'd like to withdraw mine. And, okay. and what I'd like to do is to make a motion that we continue it to January 26 with a re-notification of abutters. This is Barbara, I'll second that. And the re-notification expense should be at, out of the uh, escrow from the applicant. Um, so Annie, yes, you could charge that. And you, I would suggest you specify whether you want it to be by first class mail or by certified mail, just so it's 
it's clear what the cost should be. She disconnected. Oh, I'm here still. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If you want, if my two cents, I think the first class mail is, is, is fine since it will just be sort of a, a renewing of their notice. That way the applicant doesn't have to spend so much money. I agree. Madam Chairwoman, the, yeah. you now actually have another member. Uh, Mr. Zott has arrived. Oh, he has? I see. And, um, he, he can still fill Mr. Cromlick's position. Okay, so I'll um, have Mr. Zott fill that position. And in place of Roger, oh, well, he could be Roger. Uh, actually, it, yeah, you can put him in place of Roger and then. Roger step down. Yeah. Okay. So maybe Jenner, I'm, I've been trying to read these procedures. Yep. So in my reading, I thought it said that you didn't have to notice the abutters until you accepted the application as complete. So that. That's correct. Um, Newtons and most towns, what they do is that you actually, when you get an application, you just go ahead and notice it to abutters. The reason being that if you didn't do that, even if you accepted an application as complete on, say, the first time they're before the board, you would then have to notice abutters and they would, it would take an extra meeting at minimum. So you tend, you when you get an application, automatically notice it. Most towns do that so that there is the possibility that they could have their public hearing the same night you're first discussing the application. This, so that is what your procedures say, that it's not formally the public hearing and you don't have to notice it until you have a complete application, but there's nothing that says you can't notice before you have a complete application. Okay. In this case, you did notice the application Still At not this complete. Point, <laughs> is still not complete given board actions. So that's why I made the suggestion of the re noticing. And that does not mean going in the paper, that just means the abutters. Right. So we, po we possibly could wait for that re notice until the application is complete. No, because you originally already noticed the ap this application. Yeah. Right. I, Sandra, this is Barbara. I believe a couple of meetings ago, I had made a suggestion that since it had been continued so many times that we might have to re-notice. But I guess now that Jen says that two more meetings have come and gone, that this is the time to do that. Right. Yeah, so just to reiterate, you have legally noticed this properly, but the only notice since the original mailings have been during the course of the board's meeting and so are captured in the meeting minutes. Okay, thanks. Sandra, it's Annie. Yes. Uh, I, I had to leave for a few minutes because my computer blanked out. What did I miss? Oh. <laughs> I, I, it was right after I made a motion and Barbara seconded it. Right. I, I just, um, we had a little discussion. I was asked about the um, procedures about noticing people because okay. in our procedures, it says you don't have to really notice them until the application is complete, but we can notice them at the same time that we get the application. Correct. So, and so, so that's what you, that you notice when you first get the application. Yeah. Most towns do do that. Right. Then I was just wondering if we could wait until the application is complete to like re-notice the people. But I think I got voted down on that one. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to give it, this is Annie, I'd like to give it, um, give them, you know, this next time and then, you know, rethink it if it's not complete the next time. I mean, they really, they really do need to get in a complete one, but since they're in process of talking with, and I haven't seen because I didn't look at the email, I didn't, I haven't seen what they sent in. Um, but, and I understand that Jen is saying it's still not complete in her opinion. Um, I'd like us to give us a chance to have the two engineers talk to get, 
you know, get the thing complete. If it's not complete next time, then we're going to have to think about it again because this is this is going on forever. But if it is complete and if they've resolved things, then and the abutters are re-notified, uh, albeit informally, um, not by certified mail, then we can go ahead and we can have a hearing and maybe finally get some resolution on this application. That was my other question. Do we have like a checklist to say what is complete? Because like when you read the procedures, it says that the application should meet all the points of our you know, site plan or subdivision regulation. So do we have to go one by one and say, okay, yes, you know, the application so, answer? <laughs> Sandy, um, that's effectively what Mike and I do for you. Um, you do not have a checklist. Most towns do. I think it would actually, a long time ago, I think you did have a checklist. Um, but when I'm reviewing applications, I go through, honestly, line by line and say, do you have this? Do you have this? Some of it's not applicable in many applications. This is a big one, so a lot of things are applicable. Um, but that's what has to be met, is all of those regulations. If something doesn't apply, it doesn't apply. They don't have to supply that. Like if there's no lighting on a plan, or there's no, in a subdivision, there's no roadway being constructed, and the roadway design things don't matter. But basically, I am your checklist going through. I'm your reviewer but you guys have to make the formal decision. So you also need to look at applications yourself. But right. I'm advisory only. It, all the decisions are obviously yours. Right, so the, and although you review it, and thank you very much, there might be other questions if the board looked at it too that might pop into their heads that they could ask too. Correct. You also always have the, the clause that every planning board in the state has that your, app, your regulations for subdivision or a site plan are the minimum, not the maximum. You can always, within reason, ask for more information if it's necessary for you to make a decision. That's what completeness really is geared towards, that you have sufficient information to make a decision on whatever application is before you. Right. If I may, Madam Chair. Um... Sure, Jim. Not only do we have the circuit rider, but we also have the town engineer. If you remember, he had a review letter with 27 points on it. Yes. Th those are your deficiencies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a second on Annie's um, motion? Yes. Barbara yes. Seconded. I seconded it. This is Barbara. Okay. okay. Um, does anyone else have comments? Or are we ready to vote on it? Oh, I have not Sandra, this is Barbara. Yep, yep. I have a question. I don't know if we actually nailed down whether it was going to be um, post regular postal mail or certified. I was suggesting, my motion was regular postal mail as Jennifer had suggested. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so hearing no more discussion, Jim, could you call the roll on whether to continue this till um, January 26th for item number one on the agenda? Very good. Mr. Sforza? Aye. Mr. Zott? Paul Zott says yay. <laughs> he's, re he's sending me a message, he says yay. Okay, yes, he has to unmute. <laughs> Uh, Ms. White? Yes. Ms. Collier? Aye. Ms. Esterbrook? Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. Um, I'll turn the microphone back over to Roger. Okay. So, so that motion was to continue and also to send out the... The, 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 uh, the first clap. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, Paul, we see you having audio problems. Can, I mean, can he can't hear us. Can he hear? I don't know. He said he's having audio problems. You could call us on the phone. Oh, he says he can hear. Okay. <laughs> okay. The uh, okay. The, now I am uh, re retaking my position on the board, and therefore Mr. Zott will be a voting member in the place of uh, Mr. Cromlick. The next item on the agenda is a NEPRA manifest. Uh, 
It was sent out this evening around six o'clock or so. It's all of the items that were supposed to be handled in December plus a few more. So it's a, it's a NEPRA manifest for $2,559.78. This is a Barbara. I'll, I'll make a motion to pay that NEPRA manifest in the amount of $2,559.78. Is there a second? This is Annie. I'll second it. Okay. Any comments? Okay. Uh, then, Mr. Doggett, will you call the roll? Mr. Hamill. <clears throat> Mr. Hamill. Aye. Mr. Zott. He says yes. He said yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Sforza? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Ms. Collier? Aye. Ms. Esterbrook? Aye. I don't believe I missed anybody. Okay. The okay, next item on the agenda is the acceptance of the minutes of not what it says on the agenda. The agenda says, it says November 24th, but really we need to accept the minutes of December 8th. Yes. Can I have a motion on the minutes? This is Annie. I'll move to accept the minutes of, what was it, December 8th? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is Barbara, I'll second. Any comments? Mr. Doggett, will you call the roll? Mr. Hamill. Aye. Mr. Zott. He's abstaining. <laughs> Mr. Sforza. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Ms. Esterbrook. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is committees. Um, and I think we've got comments from uh, two people. I don't know who wants to go first. Andy, you want to go or does Barbara, do you want to do your thing first? Um, mine's probably shorter. <laughs> Go ahead, Barbara. So, um, as I was thinking of this, I, I rethought it and thought maybe it makes more sense rather than action. an actual committee is to just, I will redo these applications so that they will give us more information so we know what the people are talking about instead of the the application form that we have right now, which really doesn't give us very much. And um, each one of them usually has some check things that have to do, the checklist has to do with the um, things that are on the, in the ordinances. So I thought I would just redo these and then submit them to the board and the board could take a look at them after I've done them because I don't really think that this is something an actual committee could actually do because we'd be here forever. So I'd like to pose that instead of a committee and uh, be able to uh, touch base with the administrative assistant to see if there are other things that need to be included that aren't now on the uh, application that we're currently using. My question is, would we do this? Would you, would you sort of go through them and, and, and sort of set up a whole package and then we would go over them all at once and then delete the old application form and say it is replaced by this set of forms? Or are you proposing I, that yes. we go through one at a time? No, I no. That's why I would like to meet with the administrative assistant to, to see which, you know, all those little check boxes that were on the the main one that we've been using now that don't really say too much i can find out which are the ones that he 
he needs that he uses the most and then I can just create one and give it to the board as a packet so they could take a look at it. That sounds like a wonderful idea to me. I'd like to suggest that, um, this is Annie, I'd like to suggest that this application checklist that Jen was referring to that she says is available, you know, that some people have that that be a part of the review. Um, so just what that typically is, and every town's checklist is individual. Some people have different forms and different checklists depending on the different applications. Um, those are very commonly part of the applicant's submittal information is they have to go through and say, yes, I've supplied this, or I have asked for a waiver, or this is not applicable, and then they have to sign it. They can be pretty comprehensive and sometimes they're overwhelming for a lot of people, but they're also useful because it's all spelled out. That is a, I will say, coming up with that checklist though for even just standard subdivision and site plans can be somewhat arduous, so. So maybe we'd wanna go back to a committee. Well, let me, let me explain what I've done here on the, like what uh, Jim shows up there is on the accessory apartment. That checklist is basically points that are in the ordinance. So that is giving the person the option to look through and say, okay, do I meet all of these things that are in the ordinance? And that's the same as on the other one for the home occupation, home-based business. There, a, a lot of the things that are listed are the points that are in the ordinance that they have to meet. So it's, it's sort of a different kind of checklist. That's what a typical subdivision or site plan checklist would be too. It would go through what are the requirements and it would be a list sort of like what you have there, Barbara. Uh, okay. I just think it would be good to review some of those other ones. I, I'd suggest that. And then I also like the idea of what Jen was suggesting of having um, yes, no, or um, waiver requested as, as a way to address it so that it's just very clear to the applicant and to us exactly where the status is. Okay, well, on these ones, these two that he's showing, I, there's nothing on here that you could even ask for a waiver from. Particularly with a subdivision or anything that there is. Right, no, I didn't, I didn't get to that yet. Okay, okay. I got you. Yeah. Barbara, by the way, thanks for the work you've done on it so far. Thank you. Any other comments at this stage for this? Uh, Is there a motion to? To, to, to request that Ms. White uh, continue her work for developing a set of new application forms. Roger, this is Jen, just for what it's worth. Um, I can assess with some of that. I can't completely do it, but I could certainly review it and provide mm -hmm. comment. Oh, Thank that's you. Great. Weather committee or just Barbara. Um, so do I have a second to my motion? I'll second it. Do we have any more comments on this? There's a chat from Paul saying, asking Barbara if she needs help. Okay, I'll answer that. Not right now, but I might. <laughs> I would be glad to reach out to him if he'd like to help. Okay. Any other comments? If not, uh, Mr. Doggett, will you call the roll? One moment, please. Let me... Okay, Mr. Hamill. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Ms. Estabrook. Aye. Mr. Zott. I apologize. I don't have chat up. So. He hasn't responded yet. <laughs> okay, I'll give, give him a minute. Hello. 
be still there. Oh, hi. Um, Mr. Zott, if you want, raise your hand. Hold on one second. And I'll take that as a... Excuse me, folks, I have to step away. Can I register my vote as, or did I already vote as an I? Uh, yeah, you, you voted yes. Yeah. So Paul we're, uh, saying yes now. We got a yes from Paul. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Mr. Sforza? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. That's unanimous. Uh, Barbara, I had, when I looked at your form, I had one real nitpicky co comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, wait, wait, it, it, you, on the thing at the top, you said something about a, a NEPRA fee that really should be a NEPRA deposit. Because it's oh. not. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Chair. Um, okay. I'm going to suggest that the next meeting we discuss NEPRA. Okay. Because the actually at the, the, the day of the next meeting, the a butter notices will be going up to seven dollars each. And the ads are already over a hundred dollars, so that two hundred dollars is no longer enough to cover the actual costs that come out of NEPRA. Okay. So the, the uh, cost of certified mail is going up? Yes. Roger, this, this is Barbara. I can tell you that in East Kingston, they just raised theirs from 200 to 250 for the same reason. Mm -hmm. okay, is yeah, 250 well, you, going to be enough? Uh, I just had, there's an application which will be on the next agenda where they asked me to do a rough calculation and it's a lot line adjustment. The, the fees are going to be very close to $300 because they're the only person on the ad. Ads have gone up from a year and a half ago, the, a single person ad was running about $75. Now it's 115 to 125. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, d definitely put, put some of those numbers together and put mm -hmm. that on the agenda for our next meeting. Yeah, it's, luckily we, we had one that was in arrears and luckily they came in with a check. Um, but quite honestly, we don't have any teeth to be able to go at them afterwards. Yeah, we would almost be in the situation where we would not be able to advertise unless we had sufficient deposit <laughs> on hand. Usually yes. it, 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 it ends up the registry is the last withdrawal from the NEPRA. Uh -huh. And there may not always be money left in their NEPA account to pay the registry costs. Uh -huh. Could I make a suggestion, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, based on the information that Jim has given us, I'd like to propose that we increase the NEPA fee to $300 now, and then he can give us more information. We can revisit it. But if we were to have an application that was falling short in the next couple of weeks, I'd rather not delay it. Uh, they they were nice enough. They they gave three hundred dollars to Nipra. Well, I'm just saying they did, but who knows? Yeah. Paul Zott just seconded my motion. Uh, I I feel more comfortable waiting until I have the, the the all of the data together before I make a decision on, on whether it should at what level we should bring it up to. Uh, one thing, Mr. Chair. Yes. That is part of the policies and procedures manual. The fees are in the are are are, are a, a part of the policy. Yeah. If, um, if you don't pay, have sufficient funds to pay all the fees that are owed to the town, and that would be reimbursement for noticing and such, um, you can deny an application 
based on solely on that. I mean, I, I understand that's not what you would want to be put in the position of, but you have in state law and your own regulations, the ability to collect fees. Right, I'm just looking for where it is in the, whether or not it's in procedures or regulations. Yeah. Uh, there was a Hold chat on. From, from Mr. Zott, which I'd like to, to respond to. He, he says we, we need to discuss the motion that's on the floor and that's exactly what we are doing. It's right. Discussing that, whether whether we're going to raise the fee tonight or hold off and do it later. Right. That that is part of the planning board policies and procedures manual, and therefore you would have to do like you did just did for the uh, changes to the rules of procedure. You would have to propose the language. It would have to be posted with the agenda, and would have to be voted at the next meeting. So basically what you're saying is, is it's, we have to, well, so we could propose the language tonight and post it for vote at the next meeting. Correct. And if we decided that 300 wasn't enough and we needed it to go to 350, that could still be amended at the next meeting because as long as it's within the scope of Correct. advertised. Correct. Okay. So. Mr. Hamill. We, Yep. Yes. When you're when you're finished talking, I would like to offer something. Okay, go ahead. Okay. We had a similar situation in East Kingston, and because it used to be part of the ordinance book, we removed the fee schedule. It's a separate document. It's not part of the ordinance. It's not part of the planning board rules of procedures. It's separate, so it can be voted on by the board without having to have a meeting. A, a public notice meeting. So you might want to consider taking the fee schedule out and making it a, a standalone document that you can amend with, as necessary. So, Barbara, this is Annie. Um, in order to do that, we would have to have a notice to change that. Still, we'd yes. have to have a public hearing yes. on, on changing that, right? Right, right. To, yes. to, to remove it from, from that and make it a standalone document. Uh, it's not a public hearing. It's just it has to be posted with the agenda. Right. Got it. So, I guess a Annie is is are you going to change your motion to propose that we uh, in increase the fees to three hundred dollars? and to advertise that for, for vote at the next meeting. That's exactly what I'd like to do. Okay, and, and whoever <laughs> seconded it. That was Paul they, who seconded it. Paul, yeah, Paul seconded it. Is he, is he agreeable to, to, to that change in the wording? He said, okay. Okay. <laughs> is there any other discussion? Uh, excuse me, but can you Ms. Collier moved to increase the fee to $300 and to post it for the next meeting. That's what I have written. I think it's not to increase it, but to post a proposed increase for our next agenda to $300. Which requires an amendment to your policies and procedures manual. Yeah, and, and amend the policies. This is Sandra. I was looking at the fee schedule. Accessory apartment and home-based business is only $200 too. So do we want to change that one at the same time? Paul says all. <laughs> yeah, I think you, I can, think I make a can I make a procedural suggestion? Yes. That if Paul and Annie can withdraw the motions that have been put on the table and then you can then readdress what potentially the motion would be just so it's cleaner. Okay. I, I will withdraw. Okay. Now, 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 Jen, do you have a, seeing that you, I think you have a handle on what we're trying to do. Do you have a wording that would be appropriate for the motion? Sure, that you are seeking to amend the schedule of fees in your policies and procedures manuals to increase the NEPR accounts and noticing 
fees for uh, accessory apartments and home-based businesses to three hundred dollars. Just those two, or anything else? I think it was oh, lot line adjustment too, wasn't it? Wasn't that where we started? Yeah. <laughs> so actually, can I make another suggestion? Yes. Sorry, I don't. Sorry, Annie, I don't mean to interrupt you again. That you are wishing to have a hearing to remove the fee schedule from your policies and procedures, and then you can discuss the fee schedule and everything that needs to change at the next meeting. I like that. That's simpler. I'll move that. Okay. Is there a second to that? This is Barbara. I'll second. Is there any other discussion of the motion to uh, amend the policies and procedure to remove the fee schedule and to um, make the fee schedule a, a, a separate document. If so not, are we going to talk about that next week? We're just voting to put it on the agenda next for next week, right? We're, right. we're, we're going to, we're going to, yeah, we're going to put on the, on the agenda for next week. We'll, we'll put on to remove the, fee schedule from the from the procedures and we will it, after that passes or if that passes we would then could at that same me next meeting vote to, to change the fees to whatever they need to be right okay, mr doggett are you ready to call the roll uh please who seconded that i did barbara yes i'm i'm ready okay Mr. White, sorry, Mr. Hamill. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Ms. Esterbrook. Aye. Mr. Sforza. You're muted, Steve. Mr. Sforza, if you want, if you raise your hand, I'll consider that a yes. Oh, we're waiting. Mr. Zott? He said yay. Ms. White? Yes. Okay. Mr. Sforza? I think he's frozen. Well, maybe not. I just texted him. <laughs> I think he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't put that in the minutes. Um, <laughs> he's laughing. <laughs> He's okay. smiling, so apparently. Yeah. Oh, here you. <laughs> you're mu you're muted, Steve. Nice, Steve. Oh, he's waving. I'm okay. back. <laughs> Mr. Sforza. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. So now the next thing on the agenda is the uh, the other committee item. So, that, Annie, would you like to? Uh, yeah, I put, I um, sent out, I think uh, I sent to Jim and I believe he forwarded to everybody a PDF of a, a kind of a proposal for um, a master plan committee. Jim, can you put it up? Yeah, just let me. It's being shared. Thank you. So this is just, um, you know, that's just kind of the cover, Master Plan Steering Committee, 2021 Strategies and Objectives. Um, is, that this, is that the second page? Yep. Okay. Uh, build a Master Plan Steering Committee. Um, as we have in our new rule, three members of the planning board appointed and plan a message, those people to plan a message out to the community 
reach out to town boards and committees for at least one representative from each, reach out to community members via free marketing on cable, Carriage Town News, town email distribution lists, schools, library, and Facebook pages, and anything else that the committee comes up with. Um, a first target meeting for these for would be January 22nd for the three people from the planning board. Um, the priorities as outlined by Jen in her presentation, when was that, August? Um, community mm -hmm. goals, a vision statement, and a key part of that is getting community broad, as broad as possible community buy-in and involvement, a land use chapter, and add an implementation chapter. Um, Simplify and shorten the verbiage so that it isn't just a document that sits on a shelf, but absolutely um, can get used. Keep other segments for now. Um, don't doesn't get thrown out, but um, and identify segments that might be best updated by existing boards and committees. For instance, you know, um, recreation. What's going on there, or you know, that kind of a thing. Um, appoint one master plan steering committee member to work with each one of the boards and committees. And next, um, the vision statement is looking to have planning board approval of a survey by February 16th. Um, distribute the survey, again, using the free outreach media um, with the survey due back by February 26th and then draft a vision statement with the goal of having planning board approval of a vision statement by March 16th, a public hearing on March 23rd, and revision or adoption on March 23rd. And the next, please, thank you. As for the land use chapter, that gets shaped by the vision statement. So simplify and shorten with the master plan subcommittee, master plan steering committee approval, um, coming to the board, incorporate other current chapters, possibly um, demographics with sources for most current data, housing, natural and water resources, villages and construction, and then look for planning board review, a public hearing and possible adoption, adoption, uh, adoption by June 15th. The implementation chapter is one that we haven't had and that, that has been in all the reading I've done and that Jen actually referred to is in the last 10 years that's become a really important part. What we have now in the, plaster, in the master plan is each segment has kind of a series of goals, but there's really not um, any tracking. So the implementation chapter would review all the chapters with their existing recommendations, evaluate and assign goals, and then set measurements and tracking. The implementation chapter would then have planning board review, public hearing, and again, goal of June 15th approval. So then after all that, the next steps would be, where are we on the master plan? What needs to be completed to happen to complete a review of the whole thing? Can we update or eliminate other outdated chapters? What ongoing updating plan makes sense for Newton? Example, certain number of chapters per year is our strategies used. There are in many communities um, standing master plan committees that review, take on a couple of chapters on an ongoing basis and just kind of keep it going. Um, are there zoning regulations that should be looked at in light of the new vision statement? And for tonight, um, I'm asking you to approve or modify this outline and then appoint up to three planning board representatives. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Does anyone have any comments? I, I think it, it, it's a good roadmap. I, I, I'm very leery of the timeline, especially the, the very beginning in terms of you're, you know, you, if, if we were to appoint three members tonight, I, I, I assume the first thing you're going to be doing is trying to recruit non-board members 
and then to get them approved and, and, and also to develop the uh, survey. And I think that's going to take a lot more time than, than you've given yourself. That could be, Roger. Um, I, I mean, I totally agree that this a timeline is one, um, just a target. It's just a series of goals. It's something to measure. It's something to uh, modify as needed. But it also kind of keeps you on track and keeps you focused. So I think having one to start with makes sense. There are um, invitations and vision statements and surveys and such out there so, so that it might be possible to do. It might not be, but we won't know till we try. So I don't think, I don't look at it as a law. I look at it as a guideline. Uh -huh. yeah, like that. I, I think the, the one thing that I would like to s make sure that we get is you know, a, a really good input from the community for that vision statement. Absolutely. Don't, don't want it to be just, you know, the idea of two or three people, even I, I know when I was looking at the information on our old, uh, the, the, the last time it was, the master plan was redone, redone. I think that they, they did a survey and, and the results were, there was a very small number of people who responded. And, and that sort of concerns me. That you know, we, I, we, I, I don't know how you how you get more community involvement, but I think it's important that we do. Right, Roger. This is Barbara. Yes. Um, I think that this is a very good plan, but it seems to me that it's very aggressive, and I don't think I agree with you that I don't think the time frames could be realistic because that's a very short time frame, especially for the visioning, uh, visioning step. And it, it allowed like 10 days to get a survey back. You, you really need a lot more time than that and have public visioning sessions with people in the town to get them um, involved with that. And unfortunately with COVID, that's not very easy to do now. It, it was always hard before. So I think that it, the I think your your presentation is great. I just think maybe your time frames are a little aggressive, and I think you haven't um, allowed enough time for for the information to come back from the people in the town. Um, I think there are a couple of things I'd like to address. One is that um, since the last time, we have a lot more technology and a lot more resources to reach out to people than we used to have. We don't just have sending out a letter in the mail and posting something in the library. We have cable, we have the Carriage Town News, I would imagine was probably used before. We've got emails and a lot of people are signed up for town emails. We have our town website. There are just multiple ways. And we can also send out notices through the school district um, just by asking them to put them in their, their weekly letters. So there are a lot of ways that we can use the technology that's here to reach out to people. Um, I also have found that, um, and Paul writes, the last two times I was involved, it was difficult to get people involved. Paul, that is like a master statement for any kind of volunteer in any town ever, <laughs> you know, getting people involved is really, really tough. And, you know, if, if we reach out, and I think if we give my experience with the schools has been that when they do a survey and ask for it within like a week to 10 days, people don't tend to put it aside, they tend to, to answer the survey. Um, if, if you make it, if you give it scarcity, you give it a time frame, people tend to respond. If we got three responses and it didn't work, then we'd have to rethink it. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to throw out having a plan. We try it, and if it has to be rethought in the future, then we do that. Um, Annie, I know that you and I had talked quite a bit about, or I'd given the example of the Fremont master plan that yes. I think that you had liked. Um, just for the board, so um, last year I did a master plan survey and vision chapter and a growth management chapter update for the town of Fremont. Um, we used an online survey tool that my office has, and we got about 10% of the town to respond. It was all an online survey, although we had a paper option um, that we only got, I think, maybe three responses that were paper. But just for reference for that survey, um, 
It probably took the subcommittee of the planning board and the planning board itself about two or three meetings worth, so six to eight weeks to get the survey finalized, up, distributed, and it was out for about six or seven weeks um, with a couple of rounds of outreach. So the initial push, we got a lot, and then we did another social media, on town website, newsletters. Um, so we probably did three rounds of pushing to get about that 10% for Fremont. And Fremont is comparably population-wise similar to Newton. Very hip. But we got from that master plan 23,000 responses or comments because we used a combination of different survey style questions, but that really encouraged um, open comments and open-ended comments. Uh, the survey tool that we have, my office happens to use has really good analytics too. So we can use sort of that open comment analytics to get some good results. Um, but if folks would like, I'd be happy to send those um, example so you can sort of take a look. Obviously, Newton is different than Fremont and you can do things a different way, but if you just want a comparable recent example, um, I'm happy to send those along. This is Annie. As Jen mentioned, um, she and I communicated and I also talked with Roger because one of the things that um, after I had done this PowerPoint and been distributed to everybody, um, I did some more work on it, especially after our last meeting got canceled. And um, I personally find the job that was done for Fremont really, really good. And one of the things that I had proposed to, to Roger was, can we encumber some of our money that's not spent from this year's budget? Um, to be able to have Rockingham Planning help us with some of this stuff because they did. I mean, this this is a really readable, usable document that that you know came up very um, very attractively laid out and everything. Um, and what Roger told me is that we always have some you know some money that is left over in the budget. I know one of the members had um, said at one point that. One of the reasons we haven't updated the master plan, plan is because there's never any money to do it, but I think there is money. I think there's some available, and I think, Jen, you told me that Fremont spent about, what was it, $7,000? Um, the survey with the vision chapter and also a growth management control chapter, it was, I think it was $7,500. It might, be, might have been $7,000. It was yeah. in that ballpark. So I don't know how much, you know, Fremont just had you do it all and how much they did themselves, but. Um, I facilitated the vast majority of it. They certainly reviewed it, but I was doing most of the facilitation. So I, you know, I think what we're proposing here is that it be a lot of our own volunteers doing some and trying to get a lot of buy-in and not necessarily relying on, um, you know, Jen to do it all. But, you know, I mean, I'm willing to work at it. I'm retired. I can do this. Um, and <laughs> um, we uh, and, and then have Jen help us really pull together professionally. So I think we could bring it in probably for less than that. But it's one of the things I'd really like to do is to talk with be free if if I'm on this committee to be free to talk with Jen and to talk with our other people and then come back to the planning board and say with a proposal for um, some money to be able to go into it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's there's five thousand dollars in the budget for consultant services. It really isn't earmarked for any particular thing, and I think that uh, basically the lion's share of that for 2021 should be available for work on the master plan. But and I agree with you, Annie, that what you need to do is once you're committee gets formed and that, that and then lay out a plan for how, how much work you think you can do and, and, and to work with the Rockingham Planning Commission to see you know what what you would expect from them and then they can give us a, a price on what that would be. Exactly. Yeah. And, Roger, and, this is Barbara. Yes. Um, can can Jen let us know if there maybe are some grants that we could take advantage of to go towards any of this? Honestly, Barbara, not for just doing a survey and a vision chapter. Okay. Um, doing other chapters, 
housing potentially, sometimes some environmental things, transportation generally, yes, occasionally energy or recreation, not for land use and vision. Okay. It, it, ju it just doesn't exist. Okay, I thought I'd ask. Sorry. <laughs> would be good. Yeah. It, it would be great. It would be great if the state gave towns money to do things they're supposed to do too, but alas. <laughs> Okay, so uh, to move things along, are we ready, is the board ready for a motion to authorize the formation of a master plan committee with a um, charter to do the items that were laid out in Annie's presentation, not necessarily uh, sticking with the timelines. I'll said so moved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess Roger made the motion. <laughs> well, I, 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 I asked a question, but if, if there's, I mean, really, I think Annie should be the one to make the motion. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we ex that we establish a master plan subcommittee with the broad outline as um, as laid out tonight. Paul seconded. Any more comments on the motion? Mr. Doggett, will you call the roll? Mr. Hamill. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Ms. Esterbrook. Aye. Mr. Sforza. Aye. Mr. Zott. He said yay. I, I, I've got the chat, finally got the chat up. Oh. <laughs> Ms. White. Yes. That's unanimous. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is to uh, name some people to the committee. Uh, would ask for. I, I I assume Annie, you would you would like to be on the committee. I would. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha have you tried to recruit anyone else? I have not. I I'd like to see who you know would like okay. to do it. Is, is there any? Uh, unfortunately, there are several members of the board who aren't here tonight. But uh, of the people who are here, is anyone uh, interested in in also joining this committee? This is Barbara. I have to say that I unfortunately right now I have too much on my plate, so I am not able to participate in that. It, it's Sandra too. Also, I'm the same. Um, I you know I just don't have time out of my schedule to devote extra to that, but I'll be willing to read everything that comes to the, in front of the board. <laughs> oh, I think Paul said I volunteer. Somebody flashed oh, up Mr. there. Sforza. Oh, Mr. Sforza. M Mr. Sforza volunteered to be on the committee? Yep. Yes. And Paul said that he's in the same position that he has too much on his plate, I think. Could I make a suggestion only yeah. because he's not here this evening? Uh, Mr. Andrews uh -huh. has worked on master plans before and he might be willing to, but he, because of work, he was unable to attend this evening. I, if you don't so have I, three people, you may want to just appoint two. Well, point then, two, and hopefully he will also volunteer. And can be, yeah, either he or, or Edwin, you know, I mean, we do have okay. a couple of okay. members who aren't here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Who so, knows whether okay. Ziggy would be interested, you know, I mean, we have, we have a few people who are not here, but if we appointed the two of us, then we could get started and come back to you with something. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I'll make a motion to appoint Annie Collier and, and Steve Sforza to the uh, master plan committee. I second that. This is Barbara. Any other comments on this? 
Okay, uh, Mr. Daggett, call the roll. Sorry, I had to write. <laughs> Mr. Hamill? Aye. Ms. Collier? Aye. Ms. Esterbrook? Aye. Mr. Sforza? Aye. Mr. Zott? Got it. Ms. White? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. So now you can go and do your recruiting. Yep. I have reached out to a few uh, community members and, uh -huh. you know, um, trying to build up a little bit of enthusiasm and we'll have a lot more to do. <laughs> Very good. Uh, any other business to be brought before the board this evening? Nothing on the agenda. Does any member have, or alternate have anything that they want brought up? No? Okay. Meeting's adjourned at 8.06. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Paul. 8.07. Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. Night, Paul. Good night. By the way, Paul, were you alone? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I just need it for the minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Uh, I'm leaving. <laughs>